everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this evening. I trust and hope that you've been enjoying your Saturday. And so we're going to be taking a look at these active tropical storms, Philippe and Rena. So Rena is the weaker of the two. And as we can see, just looking at this, it is not uh, sustaining any substantial activity near the center due to that wind shear. So the wind shear has been taking its toll on the cyclone. So we're going to be looking at both of these. Let's go ahead and switch to the infrared satellite imagery. And here we can see that there is some activity across some areas. There's a low pressure system uh, exiting the U.S. that has actually resulted in some uh, flood and rains in parts of New York. So that was an issue yesterday. And uh, there we see that frontal system attached to it, extended down into the Gulf of Mexico uh, with some uh, activity in association with it as well. So we're going to be moving on to the area in a moment. But as we look out into the main development region, there is Philippe and Arena up there. So as I said, there isn't much associated with it and then all of that convection out there is in association with a tropical wave now let's go ahead and zoom into some areas starting out with northern south america and here we can see that we've got a lot of thunderstorm activity across parts of colombia and venezuela as well as we look into the guyanas just as forecast this morning there isn't anything much happening in trinidad earlier there were some thunderstorms which are dissipating right now uh, maybe still with some overcast conditions for some areas as we even look into parts of central America, uh, Panama, going to Costa Rica, even up in parts of Nicaragua and Honduras, we can see some thunderstorms there as well. Things are raining pretty dry for the ABC Islands, but it looks as though the islands might experience some overcast conditions with all that activity making its way out of Venezuela. So let's move further up north and we can see here that there's a lot of thunderstorms across parts of Florida and even in sections of western Cuba going to the Yucatan and uh, in parts of the Bahamas. But that's not true for everyone. So for many of us, it has been pretty hot throughout most of today. But as we look down into Jamaica, there we can see lots of thunderstorms developing across some areas. Unfortunately, not all of the island, but for many of us, there are some thunderstorms helping to uh, offset that heat that we've been experiencing through today so some well-needed showers some thunderstorms even some cooler winds as well so that is a plus this evening and same story for some spots in Hispaniola not from many areas uh, earlier in Puerto Rico and then over in the Lesser Antilles there's uh, actually some activity being fed into Philippe so that has been helping to induce some thunderstorms that we see near Martinique and St. Lucia so there is some activity there even for surrounding islands as well there is a bit of activity induced by uh, all that moisture feeding into Philippe. Now, as we take a look at the cone forecast from the NHC for both of these systems, we're kickstarting things with Arena. As I said, it's not going to be lasting long and it, be uh, it could become post tropical as soon as tomorrow and eventually dissipate as we head into the early part of the new week. But currently, it continues to sustain those winds of 45 miles per hour and is moving up to the northwest at 14 miles per hour. So it's barely hanging on to tropical storm status. Let's head on to Philippe. So here it is, also sheared but not nearly as bad compared to Rena, and it is actually going to be improving. So uh, the shear is not going to be too unfavorable, which will allow for it to uh, gain some additional strength and could potentially make it to hurricane status. Some models suggesting that it could make it to major hurricane status while not impacting anywhere. But this is the latest going forecast this evening. As we can see, the NHC expects that it will become a hurricane to the northeast of the uh, Leeward Islands right there early on Tuesday that is expected. But as of now, it is sustaining winds of 50 miles per hour and moving to the southwest at 5 miles per hour. So uh, the Euro and even other models such as the Canadian continue to show that it could make a closer approach to the Caribbean and if it should get a bit more symmetrical and have some more activity over in the western part of it then we could actually see some impacts in parts of the northeastern Caribbean islands the northern leeward islands and potentially uh, the Virgin Islands as well but the main impact would be in terms of rainfall activity again that is if the system should get a bit more symmetrical or have some more activity over in the western part of it because even if the center is going to be close enough we don't see see much happening over in the west so that would limit impact not that we want anything major but that rainfall activity would be uh, such a relief because for the past weeks and even months there hasn't been anything substantial in the area.
but let's go on to the visible satellite imagery here so it's getting darker as the evening hours approach and uh there we can see so there is the center of it and this is the entire thing we're looking at but again that wind shear is displacing all that activity to the east and south of its center so that is why there isn't much happening over in the western side but again once that shear gets a bit more conducive uh we'll see philippe trying to get in itself together and uh eventually strengthening into a hurricane and now we're taking a look at this next graphic here depicting the probabilities of those tropical storm force wind speeds and we can see that some of the islands of the caribbean are highlighted in that darker and even that lighter shade of green so a maximum chance up to around 10 percent of seeing or experiencing those tropical storm force winds so low chance right now that uh, that is going to be happening but we'll see what the system does overnight and i'll include all of what to expect as we head into tomorrow morning's update so stay tuned for that and uh, let's now go ahead and take a look at a bit of model data there's something else i want to point out so as we head into the month of october the caribbean and gulf are two areas that we want to watch for development as we head into the coming weeks and models have been suggesting that a tropical wave out in the main development region will try to get itself together as it approaches the caribbean icon has been pretty consistent about that let's go on to it now and uh here we can see so this is the latest model run this is the 12z model run here and uh take a look at this so there we have philippe making its way out whatever is left of rena and uh that next tropical wave look at all of that increase in moisture approaching the caribbean eventually we see something developing as it crosses into the eastern part of the basin uh, we see that pressure drop in which indicates strengthen so that is quite interesting the canadian is also hinting at it this is as we head to uh tuesday the 10th of the month so sometime out from now and there we can see those various areas uh that the model is showing so we definitely have to watch for these last couple tropical waves of the season managing to move in and try developing but that will only happen if conditions are conducive especially in terms of that wind shear so uh, that is usually one of the big inhibiting factors as we head to the latter part of the hurricane season and then of course as it relates to the sea surface temperature is very very warm still 30 31 degrees across most of the caribbean and over in parts of the gulf especially the western gulf of mexico so those waters are enough to favor rapid intensification once other conditions are conducive so that's the condition here if it is that other environmental factors are favorable to allow for development and intensification including little land interaction because we get closer to land uh, here in the Caribbean especially near Central America and even across the greater Antilles as well so that is another inhibiting factor once these low pressure areas interact too much with land we don't see much formation happen so with all those factors being conducive then we could very well see something and that is not uh, wild for me to say because I mean look at seasons such as 2020 for example two cat four hurricanes two weeks apart one in late October one mid-November Ada Ayota and if you're from Nicaragua you probably remember uh, what those storms did to your country because it was absolutely horrifying there so it's good news that we haven't had anything major in the Caribbean but these very warm waters are just sitting around waiting to fuel that next system to move in but again only with other conditions being favorable will we see any source of significant development but we'll definitely have to pay attention to these last couple waves as I said and of course I'm here to keep you posted with these updates and that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you today so I hope you found this video to be quite informative and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I can and as always remember to be weatherwise.